You're listening to Podcast PXN, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo. Let's do this. What is up, everyone? Welcome to Podcast PXN, episode 122. I am your host, Rishan, a.k.a. Roro, and today I am joined by Dan the Halo Man, Daniel Prendel, and Super Monkey Balls, newest character, <laughs> Christian. How are you guys doing today? <laughs> Great. Very Do you good, imagine great. if they put me in there? That'd be awesome. I can, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and the next Please, character, Sega. Christian. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching live. And for chat. Just a reminder, we are each and every Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on YouTube and sometimes on Twitch, but not today. And we're going to get to that as our first PXN news story. Uh, but our tots, topic of the show today is... Uh, recent game previews. So we're going to go through a couple of big game previews together and talk about our thoughts, uh, if we're excited, if we're not excited. And that's going to be our topic of the show today. But as I said before, PXN News of the Week comes first. So our first story is a Twitch September 1st protest. So as I said, we're not streaming on Twitch today because we are, you know, partaking in this this protest, it's called a uh, hashtag a day off Twitch, where a couple of streamers came together to do this uh, this boycott, I guess, if you will, for against Twitch because of the hate raids that were going on on Twitch. So they decided to, a bunch of streamers decided to take the day off and kind of stream elsewhere. But beside, I'm going to take a second to read from The Verge here. On Wednesday, September 4th, a number of channels on Twitch will go dark as streamers participate in a hashtag a day off Twitch, a walkout designed to bring attention to the ongoing hate and harassment that's plagued the platform for the last several weeks. Created by Twitch streamers Shiny Pen, Lucia Everblack, and Wreck It Raven, the walkout aims to better gr- uh, to bring greater awareness to pr- uh, the problems creators are suffering on Twitch, uh, particularly uh, people of color and women and you know, uh, trans folks, people of the LGBT plus community have been uh, faced with a lot of transphobic, racist, sexist uh, hate raids. Uh, usually raids are a positive thing where somebody would raid your channel with a bunch of viewers from their stream to kind of support someone else. But as of late, uh, some people have been using bots to hate raid people. And so instead of showing support, they would be just spamming your chat with horrible, horrible messages. So a lot of people are saying like they're uh angry and kind of fed up that this is still going on because it's been going on for quite some time but it's just had a very strange uptick for some reason uh seeing more of it for some reason or maybe it's just being caught on camera a bit more uh whatever the reason people were fed up with it and deciding to take a day off in hopes that twitch will make a difference uh on the platform um but yeah i just want to pass off the question to you guys uh your thoughts around the situation do you think change is going to come from this um, Christian, what do you what do you think about the day off Twitch uh, situation? I hope so. I mean, it's it's essentially just like one big protest to get Twitch's eyes on on like, yeah, people are actually mad at our lack of an actual response. So much so that I saw today's Streamlabs actually uh, came out with like their own tools from their own um, like if you have their their software their platform, you can activate safe mode, which I thought was really cool. Um, and I would love to see Twitch. Um, reach out to people who have already figured out ways to kind of circumvent this without having to do a bunch of sh- like keyboard shortcuts just to kind of turn a f- flip a switch and turn it on and go straight into some kind of safe mode because that stuff is out there people have figured it out and uh twitch needs to get on it one thing i want to add is that um kind of unfortunate to see a lot of other like bigger streamers um a either just in general streaming today or b saying like oh i would do this if people were actually um like not going to stream this day and it's like well you know if more people came with the mentality of like i'm not going to stream because we shouldn't be streaming then guess what more people would not be streaming today so Mm -hmm. yeah 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 christian i agree uh and that whole uh safe mode thing that you were talking about on twitter i saw that as well and i think that's very interesting for like uh toning down like toxic conversations on twitter absolutely However, like on Twitch, I <clears throat> I feel like they shouldn't have to activate something like that. Like, you know, like th- that should be something that's just built into the platform. And uh, like there's certain words and like things that people say in Twitch chat that 
should not be allowed and like some people talk about you know oh freedom of speech and i have freedom to do whatever i want and all these things and it's like well no you don't have the freedom to be a freaking asshole like don't just try to degrade people just because of certain you know things about them like like ro said there's so many you know so many different types of people that live in this world like you do not need to pick apart people just because they don't look the same as you or act the same as you or uh, like different things than you like people just need to be respectful of each other and and twitch needs to acknowledge the fact that people aren't going to do that by their own you have to force them to uh, be better essentially and that comes with better tools and better you know awareness uh, a whatever whatever it is whether it's AI or whatever it is that can make sure that what is being put into the Twitch chat isn't something that is just completely toxic that's, you know, completely unacceptable and, and not needed at all. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I the whole freedom of speech thing, like I I I yeah, it's just I don't mind it because it's it's just the the thing that I don't understand is that when they say that they always expect it to be without consequence like you have sure you have the freedom to say whatever you want but you also should expect and deserve the consequences that come with saying whatever that so if mm. you're going to say all these horrible stuff on switch then you shouldn't be able to do it every single week you should get the ban and you shouldn't be able to use the platform and stuff like that if that's how you want to use your freedom of speech mm. um but yeah I, it's it's crazy um i hope it does do something um i think twitch knows that it's a problem so I hope they just do fix the situation. I don't think a day off Twitch does much besides bring the attention to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. And hopefully it it it, it does. Um, I feel like a week-long thing would probably hit them where it hurts a little. But if this does spark the change, then, then great. Then I don't need to say anything more. Um, but I think um, what's really interesting, I don't think it has anything to do with the hate raids per se, but maybe it does. But some two really big uh, streamers by Dr. Oh. Lupo and Tim the Tatman mm. are moving off the platform and are, are going to be exclusively streaming on YouTube Gaming. Um, I don't know the culture of gaming's chats, really. Uh, maybe it is better. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's pretty crazy that Dr. Lupo, one of the biggest streamers on there, is just taking his, his viewership elsewhere, which... Mm. that'll definitely hurt twitch for sure from from what i've heard from other streamers over the course of a few months because I, I don't think it's entirely related to yeah. the hate raids i think this is like has been happening for a while mm. is uh the people that have been making the move from twitch to youtube gaming is just that the team behind the gaming team on youtube gaming is just overall a lot better than um the service we're getting i guess on twitch they're just more attentive, they're more reliable, they're more responsive, which is, I think, a, a big one. Whenever there's issues, uh, YouTube Gaming seems to be on it more than uh, people who are on Twitch. Um, and then I, I, I think it may have something to do with um, like pay and how much you, like Twitch takes versus YouTube Gaming, oh, yeah. but I'm not 100% sure on that front. I think I think in their case as well, it's I would be willing to bet that YouTube is paying them a, a amount of money up front to tell them like to bring them exclusively mm -hmm. to their platform, kind of like what Mixer did with Ninja and Shroud and all those other ones that they paid, and then Mixer <laughs> got shut down uh, less than a year later. But um, but yeah, I think YouTube's trying to take some mind share away from Twitch, which is a good thing like the fact that you know you have a direct competitor that is taking uh stream popular streamers away from twitch is a good thing because that's going to put pressure on twitch to increase their uh tools for this kind of thing for der derogatory yeah. comments and and comments that people are making that are just hateful so mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it'll bring better, like you're saying, better tools all around, whether it be for better compensation for streamers, like Christian was saying, like better pay, and just a better, hopefully, community, like you were saying, for the people watching and also streaming on the platform. So yeah, definitely, competition is good. So I'm glad that um, we are seeing some of that. Uh, moving on to the next topic and kind of sticking to like the same kind of mood that we're in, we'll hopeful change, uh, hopeful future. 
Um, the Overwatch team has announced that they are making a small but necessary change. They are changing the name of Jesse McCree. The Overwatch team planned to release a new lore focus event in September, but is delaying that to deal with the elephant in the room. The developers are changing the name of McCree, known for uh, the foreseeable future as the cowboy hero, amid the sexual har harassment and discrimination lawsuit levied against Activision Blizzard and other reports of misconduct. So Jesse McCree was one of the uh, one of the people uh, mentioned in the Cosby suite and the BlizzCon whole sexual assault fiasco that we talked about, uh, I guess, last month at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, um, it's again, it's it is a small change, but it's definitely one that I think needed to be taken. So I'm glad that they are doing that. Um, Daniel, what did you think uh, about this? Yeah. There's a, so yes, this is absolutely needed. And this was, you know, a long time coming. I do think it's funny though. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh at, uh, when you said that they're uh, making him known as the cowboy hero or whatever. It reminds me of the Washington uh, football team when they had to change their name because obvious for obvious reasons and similar, you know, capacity, but the, it's like, pick a name. Don't just call it the Washington football team. Pick a new name. Like, Ah, it's been two years, and but yeah, obviously this was a month ago, so they haven't had time to deliberate that and figure that out yet. But uh, yeah, it's super important for this. There was there was one conversation I didn't like that came out of this. I saw people online saying uh, like, "Oh, we shouldn't have developers' names named after characters in game," and like that's so like that should never happen, and all this. Personally, for me, like. I think it's awesome to have developers names in the game because like they worked so hard to um, make these games and make them so good that I don't think we should, you know, criticize the developers for putting, you know, developer names into the game. I think we should criticize them for putting bad people <laughs> that work on the development team. Obviously, they don't know at the mm -hmm. time, but like one of the my i'll just give you an example one of my favorite parts of halo combat evolved playing it back in the day was like seeing your marines that are joining you uh throughout the campaign it picks from a random ne uh, name generator from all th employees that worked on the game so like even when you play the master chief collection halo ce you're playing and you get n random names put in from the original development team from bungie back in the day which is I think that stuff That's is nice. so cool. Um, so I don't want to take away from that kind of stuff, but obviously in situations like this, you have to, you know, do something about it. You can't leave that because that legacy is like tarnished. You can't obviously keep that, but. I, I missed a lot of this conversation on this day when this article was broken, just because I had a lot of stuff to do at work. So I was mostly off the internet this day. Um, I do agree with, with Ro that it, it is a, a positive step. At, like, a direction that we want to see moving forward i also agree with dan that like it's always nice to service the the team behind the game you created by you know um idolizing is the right word immortalizing them i guess in some mm -hmm. way by placing them in in the art that they're creating i think that's very cool the halo uh example i think is like super touching i love that um i i did hear there was like some discourse on like uh against this that uh the overwatch team wasn't doing enough does anyone know about this did anyone hear anything about that i i i heard a little bit about that that this that this move was not is essentially they're saying that this is not enough which i i agree with but i think the first step in hopefully more steps to, to change the gotcha. culture there but i think people okay. were just upset that like oh this is all that you're doing which is at the same time like I understand, but like we have to start somewhere, sort of, sort of thing. I don't know if you heard anything more, but that's what I that's what I heard. Okay, no, I was just curious because yeah. I I missed a lot of it, but I wasn't exactly one hundred percent sure. Yeah, I mean, even like reading the like their their post that they made on uh, online, like the article, it seemed like it was going to be like a, a just the first step, right? Oh. So yeah, well, that's what I thought too. Yeah. And like Blizzard, Blizzard has made like multiple moves at this point, like to make things better there like we've already seen multiple things occur like the, the leadership completely gone from blizzard and uh two other people brought up um, mike yabara being one of them 
Uh, and so like I've seen some steps by Blizzard. I have not seen any steps by Activision. That's my problem mm -hmm. with, with the whole yep. thing. Activision, the Activision side of it has done nothing. So. Yeah. yeah, the, the, uh, I, I agree with Daniel about the name thing to an extent where like, I love that Halo thing. I love like the Easter eggs that they, that they do for the developers and stuff like that. The part where I am a little turned off when it's like a freaking character yeah. and it's just straight up the name of a developer like oh jesse mccree jesse mccree it's like it's like uh, i don't know if like henry and the last of us was literally named after after a developer it's like i i like when it's the little easter eggs at the side but like yeah. i'm not a huge like creator by any of the stretch means but i would love to make like a comic or or some story someday i would never name after myself just to put myself in there it seems just so narcissistic to like a certain degree but like i would like maybe like write my name on like if it ever became a tv show like something a wall or like spray paint or something like that or, but i would never like name a main character or a side character after myself or someone on the team it seems that's just a little step too far to me i agree especially with, with yeah yeah but i do like like what you were saying Daniel. i think what they did was perfect like that's the the right level for me as someone who uh enjoys playing video games but yeah <laughs> That's it. That's it. Um, but Wait, yeah, Ro yeah. Rolex playing video games. I do. <laughs> <What>? I do. <laughs> it is the one hundred and second episode. Breaking news. <laughs> I like video games. Uh, moving on to our next story: Battlefield twenty forty two open beta is in coming this month. Battlefield twenty forty two will have an open beta ahead of its launch, and now Dice has shared a few more details about it. The open beta will be released sometime in september so the preload will start on september 3rd september 3rd early access starts september 4th so i'm assuming let's we'll soon. have to pre pre <laughs> very soon you have to pre-order the game to get early access probably and for everyone september 6th and it ends on the 11th so you could have a lot of a lot of time with the game so you, depending on when you start up but it's a, it's a good chunk of time if you wanted to get a feel for it before you decide to pick it up I know I will definitely be jumping into this. I've been so excited as well as I know you as well. Um, but yeah, what uh, what are you guys hoping to see in this Battlefield uh, beta? And are you guys ex going to be jumping in when it comes around? Uh, Christian, I'll start with you. I, I haven't pre-ordered the game yet just because I've been busy. So mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I hope that... I. I'll probably pre-order it just to get my hands on the beta. Because let's be real, Battlefield betas are always fun. And we always have the <laughs> expectations that it is a beta. And I think everyone who is playing is aware of this. Like, uh, even going back to, I think, like 2042, which is the first beta I remember playing for Battlefield. Like Everyone knew that we're like testing out for bugs and helping to, to get the game polished for in, in time for release. And so I, I actually spend my time like giving the devel developers feedback when I play these uh, Battlefield betas. Like It's always a good time for me. Um, Let's see if I can do it again this year because I I can't wait. I love all the alpha footage I've seen on like on TikTok and stuff. It looks so it looks so fun. Yeah, I mean, seeing as I've never played this before, and this would totally be the <laughs> right. first time I've played it before, I am definitely excited about playing this. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I'm interested to see what they have on offer, like Christian said, and uh, it's awesome that they're giving people. Um, a long time with it as well like if you pre-order it you essentially get over a week of play time with it which is pretty awesome um so i kind of hope i hope they have some uh maybe a couple maps in there some modes you know i'm mm -hmm. excited for it it's gonna be good me too very excited and hopefully my pc can can run it <laughs> hopefully that's <laughs> fingers crossed if not i'll just play it on playstation i guess True. um but yeah moving on to the next story a little psa for our dc fans out there dc fandom is coming up october 16th and there'll be some video game news suicide squad kill the justice league and gotham knights will both be shown at the event so keep an eye out for that hopefully hopefully we'll finally get some gameplay for kill the justice league uh which got a pretty cool cgi trailer at ETH three this year was that this year or was that last no game that was it that was at the last dc fandom yeah. oh, the, oh really okay never mind so it's yeah. been a year since we've got uh got anything from from this the suicide squad game so i'm definitely looking forward to see what that potentially looks like 
Um, Chris, uh, Daniel, are you excited for potentially some gameplay for this game, or is this not something that is really exciting? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still I'm still intrigued by Gotham Knights. Uh, I enjoyed all, all the Batman games, obviously. So I'm definitely down for Gotham Knights, where it seems to be you know a mix and mash of that. Obviously, without Batman, although I still have the theory that Batman's going to show up at the end and he's not actually mm-hmm. dead. But of course, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Suicide Squad, I just want to see like what it ends up being like obviously rocksteady has such a good you know history with with their games with uh, arkham asylum arkham city arkham knight uh well m- maybe not so much arkham knight but uh <laughs> suicide squad i just want to see like how they combine those characters and make a really cool story um i guess i'm not completely sold on it yet because we kind of have to see what the gameplay is but like you said it had a really cool cg tra- trailer last year so Definitely want to see more from that game and, and that studio for sure. This, this was hilarious when I saw this on Twitter because, like, wow, it's the exact same fandom from from last year. <laughs> but I also can't be more excited for it because one, Matt Reeves is the Batman. Like, I wanted to throw <laughs> that in there because so that's good. also being. Sh- I can't wait for that movie. <laughs> yes. Uh, but two, to Dan's point, of course Batman is in it. You can't do a Court of Owls <laughs> game without having Batman in the fu- in the freaking game. I almost cussed. Oh, you're. F- um, <laughs> I know, I, I, I don't like him doing the shows. It's weird, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, the wasn't, last gameplay... Sorry, what? No, I was just going to say, it wasn't the whole Court of Owls thing was that Batman was dead, but he wasn't really dead. Like, he was assassinated. Wasn't that the whole thing? This, this copy? No, mm. I'm, no mm. never mind. <laughs> I thought, wasn't there assassins after him in that one? There was, yes, there, there was assassins after okay, him. Okay, but he wasn't assassinated. Yeah. Okay, never mind. All right, sorry, uh, Christian. Where was I at? I, oh, the, the gameplay for for what we saw for Gotham Knights actually turned me off. Like, I don't like the MMO uh, take on, on, like, what I would have loved for, to be, like, a narrative-driven game. That said, there still seems to be a lot of narrative in it, so I'm curious to see more. Like, I hope that they're able to sway me and make me more excited for with whatever they plan to show next. And, yeah, you guys both said it. Like, I can't wait to see what Rocksteady is doing with um, the Suicide Squad game. I don't love that Superman's been the bad guy and a lot of... Uh, yeah. Uh, fiction lately but like yeah, i still trust that rock city can make a killer story so like why not that is okay. true like literally like what both in justice games i think he was the bad guy too and yeah it is yeah and then even stuff like the amazon show where it's like yeah essentially superhero mm-hmm. stuff but like the dar- the darker take on superman it's like it's getting a little tedious like i would love to see a, a happy superman like from the superman animated series like when i was growing up or mm-hmm. or justice league but by the way, I'm excited. I feel like people, uh, myself included, I always thought Superman was kind of like not a super exciting character. And I feel like a lot of people who make, I'm sorry, a lot of people who make the... the you just stick with that. And now it's just super, super done. We've done done a lot now. So yeah. e- even me, who isn't interested in Superman that much, would like to see him go back to his roots i guess yeah. have you guys seen the uh the cw show superman and lois oh, yeah. it, i have not I've seen, seen it but I, yeah I've seen it's, clips too. it's actually pretty good i enjoy although i i like a lot of the cw shows like the flash and that but I, I think it's actually a pretty good show there's that one clip of him like proving that he's superman or whatever and he like lifts the car yeah. and then he like starts yeah. flying with the car I was like, that's a cool clip yeah it's <laughs> nice very cool stuff well we are excited for some more dc stuff so moving on to the next story, PUBG creator Brendan Green leaves Crafton to form a new studio. Brendan Green, better known for his online persona Player Unknown, has announced today that he will be leaving PUBG developer and, and publisher Crafton to form his own independent studio, Player Unknown Productions. Uh, Green has been credited with pioneering the battle royale genre after creating Player Unknown's Battlegrounds as an armor mod and later developing it into a full game with South Korean publisher Crafton. Um, so this comes kind of on the heels of like the little uh, interesting topic that we had a couple weeks ago with uh, them changing the names and potentially more uh, player unknown versions and like the whole, what was it? They're renaming the, the series so they can better implement new uh, additions to the game. And now he's just, you know, he, he's leaving. He's doing something else now. He's he's off for hopefully bigger and better things. 
Um, I don't know what else to make of this story besides good for uh, potentially good for him for to going off to start something new after you know being a mod and creating a whole whole genre pretty much. Um, so that's really cool. So good for him. Hopefully, whatever's next is is bigger and better than PUBG. Do you guys are you guys excited for that potentially could be, or is this just you know it's off to his next next thing? Uh, Christian, I'll ask you what uh, what you think of this story in general. First of all, I didn't even know Player Unknown was like a, a an alias a for a person. Yeah, yeah and, and t- <laughs> until this, that's very cool. But like, I mean, that's cool. I, I I like when developers like establish themselves, right? And like they they make something that's very successful, and then they move on to do other projects. Like that's always exciting for me. Um, like no matter like what platform you're doing it for or, or what genre, like that that's just cool. Like I like creators creating, and so if he feels like you know he's 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 done at at uh, the, with the PUBG team, he wants to move on to something else, whether it be another battle royale or, or something new. I think that's mm-hmm. very cool, and like I look forward to whatever they make next. Is PUBG was huge, and like that influenced mm-hmm. Fortnite, which Fortnite mm-hmm. influenced. You know, it, it the, the the branches are endless now. So, yeah, yeah. very cool. Yeah, I agree. Uh, obviously, the you know the impact that it had on the industry was enormous. Even if you know PUBG wasn't as ex- as successful as Fortnite, it still had you know a huge you know impact on the current state of events of the industry because of Fortnite basically copying what they were doing. Um, but yeah, I don't know that I'll be that interested just because I I never got into PUBG. It just it felt too janky to me. I've played it a few times and I'm just like, all right, I, I see the appeal, but it's just, I don't know. It's just not like you play apex. It's like super smooth and, and fast pace and all this. And I play PUBG, and I feel like I'm like, you know, grinding chalk on a chalkboard. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, that's just my take on it. Obviously other people really enjoy it, but <laughs> Uh, it does now make sense why they're renaming the whole PUBG Corp thing. Um, Definitely with them leaving. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm I'm excited to see what it could be. I hope it's not another battle royale. I hope it is something different. Um, but it, it is interesting. We're seeing a lot of new studios pop up this year, and it's 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 exciting to see what could possibly be next. Um, but moving on to our next story, Life is Strange TV adaptation is in the works. I'm reading from IGN Matt Kim. The Life is Strange TV, TV ad- adaptation is in the works and is now enlisted Grammy nominated singer Shawn Mendes to oversee the music series. The series, uh, uh, <laughs> oversee the music for the series. Why are you guys laughing? What's going on? <laughs> Why is Dan laughing? <laughs> because while we were on the previous one, I just made uh, your first word bigger and bolded because it says oh. Schwan Mendes. Oh. <laughs> so I thought we were talking I mean, about Schwans for a second. Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm laughing because they, they took uh, our idea from the show and Emmett's idea <laughs> to turn Life and in Strange into a, a, a TV and or a movie property. Yes, uh, exactly. That is true. <laughs> I was When I saw this, I was like, Oh, they were doing one all this time when I just I just thought it would be a good idea. But yeah, they they've been doing it all this time and I, I wasn't such a genius after all. <laughs> this is really really cool. Um I don't know how you guys feel about Sean Mendez as a singer or artist in general. I've only really heard his his hit music uh his hit songs, I should say, on the radio ever so often. But I feel like he would like kind of fit the mood for Life is Strange based on what I've heard. Um, but yeah, uh, Daniel, what do you think about, uh, Sean Mendes overseeing music? Are you a Sean Stan? Are you, and are you excited for the Life is Strange, uh, TV adaptation? Yeah. Yeah. I, th- I think that would totally make sense. Like, uh, that kind of like, uh, I don't know how to like that teenage, you know, not teenage, but like that drama type thing. I feel like that would fit well with the music that he, uh, he puts together. So I feel like, I don't know. Obviously, I've never played Life is Strange, so I might just be making crazy accu- accusations about it that aren't even, you know, mm-hmm. accurate. But, uh, well, I've played I've played the first Life is Strange, first but then I kind of, I was like, all right, this isn't mm-hmm. for me. I got to mm-hmm. step away. Um, but, yeah, I, I, think it'll, I think it'll be a good fit. But what do I know? I'm not a Life is Strange fan. What do you think, Roro? You're the oh, Life I don't, is Strange I want to know Roro's opinion, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I just continued reading uh, this. Done that before, you know, 
actually talking about it. But Same. it's the company behind Third Why also is doing this, which again could be really good. I didn't like Thirteen Reasons Why that much, but if you're going to do a dark like high school teen angst sort of thing, I feel like the people behind Thirteen Reasons Why may 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 do a really good job with it. Like, there's definitely some cheesy, corny aspects of life. Is see them a, a team that did Thirteen Reasons Why kind of going over the top with it. That I see it working. Um, Sean Mendes. I think could do a fine job. I would just love the honestly the original soundtrack should just be included because the soundtrack for the first Life of Strange is so good. So I would just love that. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited for sure. Definitely excited to see where this goes. As as someone who just last or on, on hundredth episode hoped that this would happen. So I'm glad to hear that it is actually true. So yeah. Okay, time for time for my sinner yes. thoughts. Okay, so I I also like Ro started uh, reading on uh, the IGN <laughs> article. And I, first of all, I didn't even know the show was announced in 2016. Like, five years ago? That's oh, bonkers wow. to me. Where was this news? I completely missed it. <laughs> um, uh, the other is that Legendary is working on it, which is, like, a pretty cool film company. I like a lot of their big, blus- big blockbuster movies, not of lately, but, like, of past few years, are, like, bangers. The Batman movies, your, your Nolan movies, those are all Legendary. I mean, you got some stuff like Godzilla and their Detective Pikachu, whether or not you like those movies, I think, is going to be... Uh, up to personal taste but if you have teams like that working on life is strange uh the property along with um the 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 other production company that uh, anonymous content that works on 13 reasons why i think that team is going to be really good at selling life is strange for the intended audience with which might be kind of that um mid to older teen range um so it has the potential potential to be really cool for like their intended audience I think what's going to come down to me whether or not it's going to hit or not is uh, who's directing and who's writing the episodes. Other than that, like, awesome. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I always get excited for for these things. It We've got a couple of good video game movies uh, recently. Sonic. I feel like Sonic, yes. Mm-hmm. I, I can't wait for the second one. Um, but And then sometimes we get Monster Hunters. There's always... <laughs> I'm so excited, but then it's like this this could just crash and burn. But I always get excited, especially for when they start casting people. It's like you get to see like, oh, it looks just like her. Oh, that will be perfect for this role. So I'm definitely excited to see uh, what what next news story uh, may come out of this. Hopefully we get some faces to go along with the characters. So I'm definitely excited. Speaking of, because I, yes. I didn't realize we didn't put it in there. Did you guys see the Resident Evil screenshots? Yes. Good. Thoughts on those? <laughs> We'll I'm, not, I'm not a huge Resident Evil fan, so I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Daniel, what? I, we'll see. I don't know. I'm not <laughs> convinced by the screenshots. It looks a little cheesy, but uh, but I will say the the Resident Evil movies prior were very cheesy as well at times, and I still loved them. So I know a lot of people like hate them and like curse them to hell and all that but i absolutely i love the resident evil movies i don't care what people say except for the uh shoot i forget which one the second to last one was horrible don't watch it but okay <laughs> what did you Dan. think uh christian of the screenshots i mean i saw them and it was the exact same thing that dan is like <laughs> yeah we'll see we'll see <laughs> shout, uh, shout out avon hoagie even Ho- uh, from uh victorious <laughs> sure Great show, great show. <laughs> Moving on to our next little story, Skate has been announced for PC. They did a little teaser trailer on uh, Twitter there with a little dude. Well, not a little dude, a dude skateboarding. <laughs> and they teased uh, that it'll be PC. Uh, do we know when? Not do. Like, uh, Christian, you added it to this story. Are you a big Skate fan? And, and do you have any more, any more info than, than Am this? Am I a big? skate fans are you kidding me dude Sorry. i cannot wait for this freaking game like oh my god skate one i think is honestly i'm gonna say it's probably the best one it's my favorite i love it it's so grounded um yeah dude i can't like any detail uh, about like skate that's coming out i will probably put into our doc because i'm so excited and so if you are a fan of skate on pc which uh as of now there's no way to play it unless you emulate it there we go there that is go. really cool that they're uh, kind of given that fan base that that's pretty awesome because I, I love the Tony Hawk games from, you know, back in the day, not the newer ones. Uh, but 
and you know pro skater pro skater 2 and all that it was so good perfect i'm gonna grab something i'll be right back all right the punk rock music and uh perfect soundtrack loved it so much it was it was amazing so if skate can capture just a little ounce of that i'll be all in for it i was gonna make us a guess what which christian's gonna bring us but never mind (laughs) skateboard skateboard yeah nice cool This is this is for uh, another story for later. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, really? It's not not for skate. It's not for this one. Surprisingly, <laughs> okay. no. Fair it's going to be right. for mm-hmm. Hello Kitty. <laughs> All right, talk. Dan. Dan said it. So. Was it really? Oh, yeah. I was just kidding. <laughs> I was oh, wow. kidding. I, I didn't know it was actual. Re- wow. Yeah, I got Hello. I got Hello Kitty wheels on my skateboard. Nice. I love it. I wore. Uh, I have a Naruto X shirt, and I wore it to work. Everybody's like. What? That goes hard. I love that. Sh- like, are you a fan of Naruto or Hello Kitty? I, I always had to ask because sometimes they would say Hello Kitty. It's like, all right, fair enough. Nice. So, yeah, Hello Kitty, Sario. So cute. Love those characters. Um, but moving on to the next story, they got some new characters coming to Nickelodeon All Star Brawl. Uh, the two characters that got announced to the roster are Cat Dog and April O'Neil. April O'Neil fans are still winning after she got announced for the uh, Turtles in Time remake. Um, so awesome. I'm glad that she's here as well in the Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Uh, and CatDog, great show. Glad to see uh, them also added to the roster. But along with that, there has been a leak of some more potential characters. Ooh. And I'm very excited to announce that Korra and Aang may also be joining. Depending. Oh, but we knew those. We knew? Right? Okay, never mind. Aang, Aang was already, I think, already on the roster, and then Korra was one of the silhouettes on the box art, and everyone okay. was like, that's Korra, that's obviously. Korra. Okay, perfect. I'm glad Aang was, was announced, and I'm, I'm, I hope Korra also joins, because I don't want to say, say anything like any crazy takes here, but I do like well, Korra. <laughs> Should I finish my sentence? No? I, Let's okay. say it. <laughs> I say do it like Korra. Where, where is Where is my lovely art book, oh, The wow. Legend of Korra. I love Korra so much. That's cool. But that uh, awesome. yes, I, I will get canceled. I, I understand <laughs> Aang is a G, but Korra, I love her so much. But uh, add, are there any? Yes, yeah, sir, go ahead. Yeah, to add to this, uh, so there are three characters left to reveal after this. Um, obviously, one seems to be like it's going to be Korra. Uh, and then the other is it looks like Ren and Stimpy, according to the yeah. subreddit. Hmm. Um, so yeah. yeah, very cool. Uh, I hope the Crimson Chin is one of those characters as well. <laughs> Are there any crazy vaults that you would like to see come to All Star Brawl? I told uh, uh, Emmett that I wanted uh, Keenan and Kel to be the ice climbers right. of of yes. Smash Bros. <laughs> Or not Smash Bros. of uh, Nick. Uh, yeah, All Stars. That would yeah. be awesome. <laughs> uh, Can you, do you have any random ones? Gosh, I don't even know if I could think of any. Uh, <laughs> I guess, have any of the Rocket Power characters been confirmed oh, for be this? Cool. I think that I would don't, I don't think so. I would love any of them. Yes, yeah, I agree. Cool. <laughs> uh, and, even Tito. Yes, Tito would be cool. <laughs> Uh, and I don't care about Sean's pessimism for this game when we were talking about it. I'm going to be optimistic, and I'm, I think we're all going to be optimistic about this game, I think. <laughs> I hope it's um, good. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I would love both of those uh, characters to come as well. Um, I think I said last time I would like uh, the Chalk Zone characters to come, but I saw somebody uh, say Jenny from... Uh, yes. From My Life as a Teenage Robot. That makes so much sense. That would be awesome if she was at it. So yeah, this is this is really cool. I'm 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 enjoying it. Every just okay. I'm like, I'm excited. I'm intrigued. Add some more characters that I like, and I I might buy the game. Yeah, definitely. I think there's a little bit too much uh, double dipping in the series. Like there's um three or four SpongeBob characters. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Reptar is a character, which is just strange. Uh, Helga is another weird one. Um, and then uh, Nigel Thornberry is another strange one. Oh, like, Nigel come on, like Jenny would have been awesome. Yeah, yeah, and we and we just gave up, gave you guys a bunch of ideas that you could have used instead of all the SpongeBob ones. So, you, you know at, what? At the very least, 
You know what? Nintendo brought every single Smash Brothers character in the history of Smash Brothers to Smash Brothers Ultimate. The least they could do is bring every single Nickelodeon character to this game. At least they can. happen. (laughs) (laughs) Moving on to our next story. A little tidbit here. Death Stranding may be getting a sequel. Uh, Who's the source, you may ask? Norman Reedus. None other than Norman Reedus. I think, uh, this is a quote from him, I think we're doing a second Death Stranding. The game is in in negotiations now. So, yay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, I I know, uh, Christian, you're a big Death Stranding fan. Is that correct? Am I a big Death Stranding fan? I'm only (laughs) making a 40-minute video essay on it. (laughs) And, uh, Daniel, did you ever jump in? Or you jumped into it, but did you finish it? I did not jump into yeah, it. I mean, I, we did not jump into it. Okay. No, I, I just don't. I never thought it would be something that I'd be interested in. Uh, some of the newer stuff that they've been adding, though, I feel like would interest me, like the stealth stuff and like the act, more actiony stuff. Yeah. Uh, the whole like delivery aspect, I was just like, uh, I don't know if that would be at my alley. That's the best part of the game. <laughs> delivery. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I, I, I jumped in. I haven't. Been- with what I played so far, um, but yeah, I was gonna I was gonna ask Daniel uh, if the if the director's cut was something that interests you, if it, if you picked your interest at all to to jump back in, because I think that's an interesting question. Ghost of Tsushima trying it as well. If these director's cut are actually working for people who may have missed it or weren't super interested in it the first time around, so you're saying that possibly maybe with the new stuff that they added, maybe yeah, possibly. <laughs> Yes, yes, I would possibly be interested. <laughs> there are the, the one question I have about this is is it's interesting, right? Because uh was it just a couple months ago maybe or a month ago that we were talking about it was all but a done deal that Kojima was working on a a Xbox pro, or was going to be working yeah, with Xbox right. exclusively. Yeah. So like does that mean Death Stranding 2 would be an Xbox game or does that mean something else Whoa. in in conjunction with Death Stranding 2? I'm glad you asked. Yes. Because <laughs> voice actors announcing stuff is never like a a telltale sign of goofy from Kingdom Hearts goofy, yeah. yeah that's exactly what it's about <laughs> cool. so I, I, I put this in there because I wanted to ask do you actually believe Norman Reedus uh, like is right that a, a second Death Stranding is coming and it's not some sort of DLC it's not like director's cut stuff it's a, an actual sequel what do you guys think I I think he's I think he's right <laughs> I hope he's right um I don't know like do, I feel like we've so far out from the the game, the original game, plus the 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 DLC, the director's cut is coming out now. I don't know if do you think they're working on DLC for the first Death Stranding still? I feel like if they're working on Death Stranding stuff, it's probably for what's next. I hope, mm. but but then again, Goofy from Kingdom Hearts Three, <laughs> who knows? Honestly, yeah, um, but I, I'm not sure if the. I... I don't know. I, I I guess Norman Reedus wouldn't just say this out of nowhere, right? Like he would have had to have like had someone like mention to him, "Hey, there's a possibility of this happening." Like I feel mm-hmm. like that would have happened, but I don't know. If Should anyone knows how to do, guy, yeah, no, because <laughs> that that game ends and it's like a very like definitive kind of like ending. But if any like all the Metal Gear Solid games end that way anyway, so if anyone knows how to do a weird sequel, that's like based on the original game but not like an actual sequel sequel i don't know if anyone knows how to do it it's kojima so i i am very curious to learn more but i don't think we're going to see that anytime soon yeah then again death stranding was made pretty quickly it was announced fast but it was also made pretty fast with the decima engine so who knows yeah i i when you mentioned that kojima was rumored to do uh an xbox and how place how Death Stranding is PlayStation exclusive, potentially Death Stranding two being an Xbox. Everyone very upset who played it, at least the PlayStation fanboy. But I feel like that's such a metaphor, and then connecting the 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 United States of America. It would be interesting to connect the gamers in this way, like get sequel. But I feel like that would be such a. Now I can't play it at all, but. I would be interested to see if Kojima would do something that crazy. Um, but if anybody would, it would be him. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Um, but yeah, that's the PXN news. Oh wait, no, it's not. Got one more story oh, here. <laughs> you're about to get you're about to get shot down by Christian. <laughs> one more story here. Uh, we got another Super Monkey Ball character. They are introducing Sario's own Hello Kitty, and she looks absolutely adorable. She looks so cute running around collecting apples and flying all over the place. Uh, Christian, as our Super Monkey Ball expert, are you excited for Hello Kitty to join the roster? Yes, but, like, why it's $5, I have no clue. Like, why, why isn't this part of the game? Also, why why a Sanrio character in general, I have no clue. But, like, as soon as I saw those screenshots, and then I got tagged by Jax, and I was like, you know what? I'm in. Maybe I won't throw the extra bucks that way. Because, like, I grew up with Sanrio, Sanrio characters. Like, I used to babysit my cousin, and she was, like, super into it. We'd go to the Hello Kitty store, the Sanrio store at the mall and stuff. So, like, I have, like, a weird sort of attachment to them. I mean, you saw you saw the wheels yeah. on, on my deck. <laughs> So, I mean, it's 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 just dope. So yeah, sure, sure, I'll play. I love it. <laughs> I feel like we've been getting uh, a new character every so far. Like we got we got uh, what was the first? We got Tails and Sonic, or was it Sonic? Just Sonic, I don't remember. And then we got uh, Kazuma yeah. Or, from yeah, Yakuza. Kazuma. Yeah, I forget his name already. <laughs> uh, but the Yakuza guy, the, the It's 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 not it's very hard to tell now. I thought it was just Sega characters, but who knows now? So it is exciting to see what they may announce next. It may it may surprise you. Answer it may Master surprise Chief. You. Master Dan? Chief. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. It's how, possible. Did they say how many more characters they have left to reveal? No. I don't think. I, did they even announce that they were doing this in the first? I, exactly. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, yeah. So. Who's to say how many more they have left? They could stop with Hello Kitty. They could have a bunch more left. I don't know. They could have all the Nickelodeon roster. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. If, they, if they're going to keep doing this, they better put online capabilities in the game. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. I was I was so excited when I saw this the mini games, and then so disappointed when you mentioned that it was local. I was like, what? No. They're, they're still good if if you yeah. want if you want to try them. But yeah. Otherwise, I I can't advise you to, to do it. Well, you yeah. know, Christian, there's always hope because they could release the game and then and five then years <laughs> later come back to it and release what features and fix things that, that should have been Party? fixed at launch, <laughs> aka the Master Chief Collection. Oh. <laughs> oh, I thought it was I thought it was a Nintendo dig. Well, yeah, I true. thought it was Mario Party you're going with this, but yeah, that works too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I should have known. It, I mean, it was Daniel. Yes. Uh, what of was course. I thinking? Of course. Um, but moving on to the games that we're playing, Daniel, what have you been playing as of late? I've been a little busy this week. I had my church's festival this past weekend that I was helping out at. I was doing a putt putt booth for the kids, so that was fun. But. Awesome. Master Chief Collection, I do want to say, the next season of Master Chief Collection starts very soon. They haven't announced what date yet, but the new armor for Halo 3 and Halo Reach looks insane. Like, it's like freaking uh, crap. What do you call that? Like, Vi- not Viking. Uh, it looks like Assassin's Creed. Like, the what do you call that armor that it has, like, that um, mohawk-looking uh, oh. thing? Crap. What you, mm. Is it? Shoot. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm upset too because there's a character in Death has this helmet like that. Oh man! Yeah, it's know. escaping me. Uh, I, Romans? I like it. Is it the Romans? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Spart- I would say Spartan. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. I don't know. Spartan. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, but it, it looks really cool, and uh, they have some like mystical armor as well that they're kind of testing. I feel like they're testing the waters for Halo Infinite's armor. So they have like this really cool like death uh, skull looking helmet that they're adding for Halo 3 and Halo Reach. So good. It looks so good. Are are they adding anything to Halo 4 multiplayer? No. (laughs) And there's Mm. a very good reason for that. I guess I won't be playing. That is actually that is a good point, though, Christian. They've been adding like they added a lot of stuff to Halo 3 and Halo Reach because those are the two most played games on Master Chief Collection. But the other games really have gotten, you know, pushed aside, essentially. Like, they've gotten some content, but Halo 3 and Halo Reach have gotten 90% of the new content for MCC. I mean, that's what everyone plays on MCC anyway, so it makes sense. Yeah. So that's all I got. Christian, what have you been up to, sir? 
Yeah, I'm still been playing a lot of Mario Golf with my my buddies. Um, one of them had a uh, his his wife had, was like out of town, so we like were hooking up every night playing the, uh, more Mario Golf. We tried New Donk City. Uh, I think I mentioned that last week. I don't remember if I did or not. And then we also tried the motion controls on Mario Golf, and it was just it was terrible. I still managed to come uh, out under par for our 18 holes, but it was rough. Otherwise, like, what a game! Every, everything inside the campaign sucks. Everything that's like a multiplayer, what a blast! <laughs> uh, and I, then I've been, I still need to get get that game. It it's fun. The multiplayer <laughs> rocks. Just standard golf <laughs> rocks. So I, if you're into that, I'd check it out. Um, and then I, I tried out uh, Psychonauts 2 um, earlier last week, and uh, I regret to inform that I do not like it. Oh, no. Al- okay. Although I wish I wish I did. Yeah. Are you a fan uh, of the first one? Yeah, I, I, I never finished the first one. I even tried it again on Game Pass, and I was like, this feels too dated for me to like go mm-hmm. back and actually finish, even though I think like Double Fine's cool. Like I love the art style, love the humor, love the writing, right? Um, and then I played Psychonauts 2 and it was like essentially still the same where I felt like uh, the combat and all the platforming was still stuck from like two generations ago um, and then one of the biggest issues I have is that uh, every time you enter a new area which happens a lot in this game um, you're constantly stopped by by dialogue that doesn't happen like actually in game so it's taking player away from controller um, and it it continues even during uh, boss battles like I fought my first boss at the end of like the actual first level i'd consider it um and then you would you do it in phases and between phases like it's the game is stopping you and you're having conversations with um uh, other other npcs and it's like why are we doing this in in the middle of a boss battle And, Mm -hmm. and it seems like from what i've heard that that issue doesn't go away like that it's that pace uh the rest of the game where you end every time you enter a new door or hallway or whatever you're it's ripped away from more scripted scenes and it's like i just want to play the game but yeah. we'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll, I'll keep at it. Jay in the chat says golf is awesome, guys. Golf is Thank awesome. you, Jay. <laughs> as soon as I continue, it's like, do I? Do I strongly feel that way? But yeah, golf is great. I like mini putt, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, I think you guys can guess what I have been playing. Destiny 2, as per usual. <laughs> the new season has started and crossplay has also been integrated with the new season, so anybody out there, I could play with you no matter what. Wherever you're playing, I could play with you too. Um, so yeah, that's super excited to potentially get to play with more of my buddies. Um, but yeah, I've been enjoying the new season so far. Uh, oh yeah, yes, Dan. No, no, I was just saying. Oh, like, oh, oh yes, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to play with all of you. Um, but yeah, uh, also, Daniel, you gifted me a lovely emblem because you had an extra one today but i i know what the emblem is for so what did you why did you get off of the bungee store friend i got lots of stuff off the bungee oh, yeah? store last week my wallet oh. broke <laughs> there's a lot of cool stuff was it yeah. was it destiny related or, uh, or 30th Xbox, anniversary stuff it was mainly the 20th an, or 30th anniversary okay. stuff gotcha, gotcha. yeah yeah cool 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 so yeah. awesome. I, have a, I, have a, I have a question yes. for you real sorry okay <laughs> i know i know lake dropped today but you've also been playing road 96 and I haven't started either, so I wanted to okay. ask you if you think I should start with Lake tonight, or if I should um, go for Road 96 and catch up on some some sweet indies. That's a good question, sir. <laughs> um, I haven't picked up Lake yet, so I would say go for Lake. Just because okay. as I'm continuing to play Road 96, I'm not sure if I would be so right to recommend it as, as much as, as what I've seen of Lake. Lake seems like such a chill time, and a good story and stuff like that so i would say go for go for lake i'm, I'm definitely going to check that out too um but i think you could wait on road 96 yeah Thank yeah you. yeah no problem um but yeah that's the games that we are playing i i hope next week i'll be able to tell you about lake i'm i'm actually on xbox game pass and there's a game that just called craftopia um and most of their description is just saying how this is a, a game under development but it's an mmo action adventure and i'm watching the trailer and at one point in the trailer there's just a giraffe and the character throws like a diamond shaped pokeball at it and captures the giraffe and that intrigued me (laughs) very much and they're riding around on hoverboards everything is crazy and i definitely will 
definitely tell you guys about that next time because I'm definitely downloading this tonight <laughs> to see what the heck this is all about. So is, does it look yes. like Doka V? It it it's definitely as crazy as Doka V, yes, but it looks more like Breath of the Wild. Literally not even hiding it. It's it's Breath of the Wild paragliders. Um but yeah. Craftopia. Excited for that. All right, moving in to the topic of the show, previews, previews, previews. And we're going to start off with something that I'm sure both of you are very excited for, the Dead Space uh, dev live stream that we uh, saw last week. Were either of you able to catch it live? I did not. I'm definitely looking at the previews because, as you know, very mm. scared. But yes. were either of you able to catch it, uh, catch it live? I watched it after. I didn't catch it live, <laughs> yeah. but... My but goodness! You, you it, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks good. It looks, looks good, right? So good, yes. Like just the like, oh, the environments. It's it's insane to me. Like you look at something like this and you're like, man, that's what I played. You know, ten years ago or what? However long it's been now. I guess thirteen years ago. Uh, but you're like, man, that looks like the game I played. And then you look at the actual game from then and you're like, oh, wait a minute, that's the <laughs> new one. <laughs> but no, yeah. you you thought that. <laughs> I did initially. When I, was, when I was seeing side by side screenshots, I was like, "God damn, the original Dead Space still holds up so well." Yes, it does. Yes, I agree. I I agree. I agree. It holds up completely. But I was like, it's just crazy to me that like seeing like the I don't know. I don't know what it is. Seeing the, the new one, I was like, okay, that's my memory. And then you look back at the other one, and you're like, oh, wait. That that's not my memory, but yeah. you're right. It does hold up pretty well, I think. But the new one looks great too. Yes, the the yeah. light. I think the lighting is the biggest thing because like game development has evolved so much since 2008 that the lighting is just insane now, especially with ray tracing and you know you have light bouncing off of metals and obviously dead space is t taking place in a space station so there's a lot of metal for light to bounce off of and like do super interesting things with that like swinging lights i remember like swinging lights so like oh. just imagining that in this new engine like bouncing off the walls oh and then the necromorphs coming down from the ceiling and tearing your head off one of my favorite things is uh, in games is the way um, devs will light dark scenes. I remember in the original Last of Us, I <laughs> I spent a good like ten minutes the first time you go down into the subway hmm. um, and you turn on your flashlight and you get up to like part of the subway where the wall is orange, it's like an orange tiled wall, and the like bounce lighting of the flashlight would um, reflect orange across the room. It would make the instead of the the white glow, it'd be an orange glow, and I was like. God damn, games are so cool like the way like uh lighting is is progressing. So, I'm hoping like when I play the new Dead Space to not that I'm looking for the same <laughs> exact experience of like wow, look at the way this lighting is reflecting in this room. But I, I mean, I am. Like the like the the, the 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 fog mechanics, the the light bouncing on like the shiny floor, just the the ambiance I think of Dead Space is going to be mm -hmm. so awesome. I can't wait to play it again. Hopefully the sound design is really good too, because that oof, that is so important in in a game like that. Oof. As as somebody who is who's on the outside looking in, the 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 technology is definitely impressive. And just looking through the the screenshots and what they showed off is like, as you're saying, the lighting on the is incredible. Uh, the interesting stuff that they're doing with the the combat, like uh, yes. I'm reading from the Bellion on on Twitter here. Uh, first look at the new dismemberment system in Dead Space. The body damage system is completely new. You can remove flesh from the bone of your enemies. And I love stuff like that, where it's not like in your face, a, a huge health bar. And stuff. Like, I love it in certain... But when you could just like look at the person that you're shooting at, and it's more visual than just like a big yellow bar, I think that's really great for immersion, especially for a horror game like this. Where you could just see, like, oh, the bones are ripping off. I almost got it. I think that's really cool, and obviously a testament to how far technology has come. And the zero gravity room, which is something that doesn't, I don't know what that means, but I, that sounds awesome. I'm looking at the screenshots here. Apparently, there's a there's a moment in the it's zero G's, and apparently they overhauled that uh, mechanic f to allow for more 360 degree freedom. Uh, thrusters, like in uh, Dead Space 2, are going to be there. And new paths, 
and environments with new challenges. So they're also adding a couple of new uh, ways to, I guess, navigate that room too. So definitely some cool stuff for fans. And the original voice actor of Isaac yeah. is back. Yes. And that's really cool too. And he didn't speak in the first game at all. So like, this is going to be really cool to see like what dialogue they they put into the game to kind of enhance the story. That space is so cool, Dan. Are you excited? <laughs> yes, I'm very excited. Yeah, and I love I, I that Gunner Roto Wright's it. coming back. Like, he's amazing mm. as Isaac. Yeah, I, there's I, a. I agree. There's a cool video essay. I think I talked about this by Jacob Geller, where he talks about Dead, mostly Dead Space Two, but he brings up some Dead Space One stuff. And it's a cool like a, like the first few minutes is just like a look at the character of Isaac because he's just not like an action hero. He's just an engineer. He's this like bulky dude who got thrown into this mess and he's got to figure out a way out. He's using repurposed engineer tools to to like fight fight his way out, and like I love it. I'm so glad it's back. Oh, yeah, that's and what you were saying, Roro, about the uh, new dismemberment system and like peeling away like the muscle and tissue <laughs> from the. Oh, that sounds so cool. Sounds so cool. It oh, does. Man. Moving on to our next preview, Elden Ring got a 15-minute behind-closed-door uh, preview for a lot of game industry folks, and they shared their thoughts with the rest of us. Um, I've got a little bit of tidbits here, but Christian, was this the game that you said that you have a, a little bit? Yeah, it's the same stuff yeah. from Nibelian, so if you're going to okay. read his stuff, then go ahead, yeah. Okay, yeah, I was just going to read the little tidbits that he's got here. Um, mm -hmm. He says, new Ed Elden Ring details. Uh, we've got some fast travel from anywhere, so that's always awesome in an open-world game. Uh, many optional encounters, uh, multiple paths and endings, plenty of lore. Uh, archers and magicians can fight from, from horseback, too, so some different variety in the enemy so good for an open world game uh legacy dungeons that are separate from the overworld um as well as stuff mechanics that are similar to Sekiro. so any Sekiro fans out there that might be a plus uh new mechanic guard counter strike after a normal block but that strike can be countered as well uh enemies have a stand slash balance that can be broken hub with npcs confirmed and a moonlight great great sword not confirmed yet question mark i don't know what that means but there's, a, there's always some kind of great sword like this in all the, the Souls games. So Okay, gotcha. Um, but yeah, I, I, I read a little bit of a uh, thing, and he talked about a huge open field and how exciting that was to just be able to go in any direction and seeing some possible uh, bosses to take down and just the freedom of that open field uh, being in a game like this. So it, it definitely is interesting. I've never been a huge Soulsborne guy. I got... I tried Neo. I think Neo is the game that <laughs> Neo is the game that I've uh, I really enjoyed, um, but never finished. But uh, I, I I do always want to give them a shot. Um, Elden Ring might be that that one. Um, but yeah, what did what did you guys think about uh, the previews that we saw for Elden Ring? So I'm I'm not a huge Soulsborne guy either, Ro. So uh, obviously I'm excited <laughs> for the <laughs> I'm excited for the fans of this this style. Uh, I have one of my buddies that I went to college with. He's a huge uh, Soulsborne fan, so he's been very excited about this as well as you, Christian. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's cool. Now my question is: It says fast travel from anywhere. Does that mean, like, what if you're in the middle of, like, a boss battle? Can you just fast travel out of the boss battle? I wonder. You probably wouldn't. You probably wouldn't be able to. Okay. It'd probably be, like, other Souls games where you, you go behind, like, some kind of curtain of fog. Gotcha. Like, once you actually yeah. enter the area, you can't exit that encounter until later. But who knows? Hmm. That'd who be knows? crazy. Yeah. You're, like, almost dead, and you pause <laughs> quick. <Boop>. Fast travel. <laughs> I'm out of here. Um, uh, I was gonna say yeah. yeah, go ahead, Christian. Sorry. What was I going to say? Yeah, oh, okay, yeah. I actually wasn't super hype about this game mm. for a while, if, I, if, if, if I'm being honest. Like, after I saw the trailer, I was like, cool, it seems to be leaning more into, like, the Dark Souls stuff um, than anything. And you know, I'm, I'm going to get flack for this, but I, of the Souls board games, I'm actually not huge on the Dark Souls games. I should give them another chance. Uh, like, that's fine. It's been a long time since I've played them. Like, sure. Like, that. there's my bias there, but... Um, until I read this, I was like, you know what? I'm in because it seems like the movement and the fighting is closer to that of Sekiro, which is a bit some of the source, that sort of like faster gameplay. Um, I guess like movement, there's the stealth, there's the uh, introduction of the stance and balance, which seems to be kind of like the posture stuff from Sekiro. 
so that part really intrigues me and then with like the lore and uh mystique and intrigue of like a uh, dark souls meets the you know um who's the guy that wrote the books uh martin george r, r. martin yeah uh mix, <laughs> mixed with mixed with his storytelling i think could make for a really cool game and the fact that this game comes out very soon i think it's january yeah. like absolutely i'm ready to go again i mean we also dan saw me fight that monkey in sekiro how insane <laughs> i got after that so oh man it, and the screenshots do look really cool the, the the images that they were able to share uh definitely set a mood for sure and yeah definitely excited for those fans out there and again this could be the one that i like the one that i dive in and maybe i become a Soulsborne fan from here on out but uh right now i'm just like yeah good I'm very excited just- for for those who are excited Think of it as a Soulsborn Breath of the Wild. Oh. And maybe that'll sell you. Maybe. maybe. It, it definitely, yeah, I like that. I like the sound of that. <laughs> um, but moving on to story, uh, Marvel Midnight Suns got a little bit of a gameplay uh, trailer, as they promised after they gave us this uh, the trailer from uh, Opening Light Live uh, that a lot of people liked. And then the gameplay came out, and a lot of people did not like it for some reason. They were not expecting that. <laughs> uh, at least based on the videos that, that I saw with the likes and the comments and all that stuff, they, they were kind of caught off guard by what they saw. Uh, as someone who enjoyed XCOM 2, I'm, I'm definitely interested uh, to see even more. I, I thought the gameplay looked fine. Uh, the card system thing, I don't know how I feel about that just yet. Um, I know a lot of people didn't like the randomness of XCOM 2 with the percentages and all that kind of stuff. So maybe the cards give a little bit more uh, structure and, uh, you know, <laughs> more assurance that you're going to land your hits. And stuff. Um, but I'm reading from Nebellion again. Uh, card-based team roster, three heroes, uh, plus environment impacts gameplay. Uh, cards can be upgraded. Social system that impacts tag team abilities between heroes. So... Uh, the social system I thought was really cool too, kind of akin to the Bioware games where you can kind of um, communicate with uh, the different superheroes on your team and form a bond with them. And the stronger the bond, the stronger the cards. So you get uh, a bonus for uh, forming a bond with Tony Stark or Magic or, or whoever else in the team. And I thought that was really cool. Um, I just want to go on a little rant here as I, as I did last week with this where we, we, I think they should just be accompanied with gameplay or, or, for, uh, a, a, or for series that are, have been established. Like what you were saying last week, Dan, your Halo thing, I, I am totally fine with that. That, is, that totally makes sense. That trailer was so hyped. I can only imagine the, the Halo uh, uh, trailer. And stuff like that is totally fine. I, it's, a, it's a game that we know. We know what it's like. But then you have stuff like Marvel's uh, Midnight Suns, where I don't think the general audience knew who the knew that this was going to be a strategy game. They see Marvel and they're like, "Oh, this is going to be a cool action game. I, I can't wait for that." And it's not to the fault of the developers, I guess, but I just feel like the general audience doesn't know mm-hmm. that stuff. So it's it it only hurts them <laughs> by the time they're showing the game game off. So I yeah. don't know. That's just how I feel about the CGI trailers right about now. Um, but yeah, back to the actual Midnight Sun stuff. What did you guys think about what or did you were you turned off by it, or is it something that you're uh, Christian? Uh, I'm I'm of two minds because I think uh, an Ultimate Alliance style gameplay would be a lot of fun, especially considering like it's like a team game mm-hmm. and the story seems intriguing. So uh, I can see why people are upset and like bummed that it was like some kind of strategy game. But Honest, honestly, I think the card system kind of intrigues me. Like the the, the idea of a, a strategy behind combat is always kind of interesting to me, and it's always kind of like that that weird like loop gameplay loop where it's like I feel smart by, you know, picking the right cards, mm-hmm. the sequence of cards, right, and and picking um, like overcoming uh, not through like brute force, but like by by thinking essentially. Um, that said, I'm not huge. I'm not a huge XCOM guy, but I I, I would consider probably trying this out or watching someone stream it i'm leaning more towards trying this out though yeah uh christian i actually agree with you like before this i was like i don't know that i was actually that on board because uh 
uh, I'm not a huge XCOM guy, but actually after this, I think I'm more interested after seeing the gameplay because like, I like kind of the card aspect of it uh, as someone who played a lot of Hearthstone when I was in college, you know, like going between classes and, you know, waiting for my next class to start. I would play a ton of Hearthstone. I loved that game. Um, so actually the card system was pretty exciting for me and they did, they did say that, um, I believe they said that there's no microtransactions for cards or anything. So it's not like, you know, it's not a predatory system or anything like that. So honestly, I don't think that, you know, I don't think that it's a huge deal and, um, yeah, it actually got me more excited to kind of check this out. So and I five Dan. Yeah. If anyone can't tell uh, on the YouTube stream, my camera decided to stop working, so I just turned it off. So, uh, but yes, high five, Christian. I, even though the viewers at home can't see. <laughs> but yeah, as as you said, the microtransactions are just for cosmetic uh, stuff, not for the cards. So it's not play to win or anything like that. Um, and that is absolutely how you get my money in a Marvel game. Marvel Avengers is just like. Gave me a cool costume. I'm gonna gonna throw some money at you. So definitely, they're still gonna get the money that they that they uh, that they want. So yeah, I, I'm glad that you guys are interested. I'm definitely interested as well. Um, I just still come down to the fact that just show off the game when you're ready <laughs> to just sure. save the disappointment for. Uh, it sets it just sets people up for for disappointment when the gameplay is 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 out. So yeah. Honestly, but, for me, at the, at the end of the day, if the narrative is good and if the gameplay works as it's, attend- as it's intended to and it's fun, I think that makes for a solid game. Absolutely. Yes. Agreed. All right. That brings us to the end of the show. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to add or or we close it out? No, I don't think so. Hydrate. Get the vaccine. I drink the vaccine. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I echoed those statements literally. <laughs> Um, but thank you, thank you everyone for watching both on YouTube and just YouTube. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, but thank you. You may have been listening on podcast services around the world, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Daniel. Much love. <laughs> Later will be greater. Much Keep love. On rolling. <laughs>